Welcome to another video guide from MakeUseOf.com. I'm Ben, and today we're going to be talking about five programs that you can replace default Windows software with. Now, you might wonder why you would want to replace the default software on your computer, and the main reason is that while a lot of pre-installed software works well, uh, there are other tools that can do the job a lot better. So we're going to take you through five options that we recommend for most people to replace default tools with in Windows 10. The first one's Microsoft Edge. So Microsoft Edge has gotten a lot better since Windows Windows 10 launched. As you probably know, it was the successor to Internet Explorer. Uh, and while Edge does have some decent features, it has extensions, it has some options, uh, and there, there is a mobile version. For most people, we do recommend Google Chrome as a replacement. So this is the most obvious one. You're probably familiar with Google Chrome and use it yourself. But Google Chrome has a lot more features than Edge. Uh, we've covered some power user features uh, of the app on the site. Um, it has a lot better syncing with mobile devices, so if you use Chrome on your uh, iPad or iPhone or your Android device, you can pick up where you left off both ways. Um, Chrome also has a lot more um, extensions than Edge does, so really it just has a lot more options for power users. So we definitely recommend Chrome unless for some reason you really love Edge um, and you want to be uh, linked into Microsoft's ecosystem that way. Um, our, our second tool is uh, Windows Media Player is the one we're going to be replacing. So Windows Windows Media Player is still around in Windows 10. Uh, it's kind of been hanging on by a thread since Windows 7. Microsoft hasn't really updated it. You can see it still kind of has that same look. Um, Windows Media Player works fine. You can use it to burn disks. You can use it to um, play DVDs if you put those into your computer. But for overall usage, we do recommend VLC Media Player as an alternative. So VLC is an open source uh, media player. It's really great because it's sort of a Swiss Army knife of, of media players. So it kind of it pretty much plays any Thing. So if you have a, some video in a weird format from an old cell phone, or maybe something that was created on a Mac that's not in a, a format that your Windows computer can read by default, VLC can pretty much play anything. Uh, VLC also has a lot of uh, tricks up its sleeve, so you can play DVDs right on it. Um, you can use it as a media library for your home network. So VLC is free, it's open source, it's pretty much a no-nonsense video player that works when you need it, and there's a lot more uh, hidden tricks to check out. Uh, if you want to dive into that. Our third tool we're going to look at is uh, Microsoft Paint. So Paint's been around also for many years. It's pretty much a basic um, a basic tool for you can draw. Uh, if you load in a screenshot, you can make basic edits like cropping it. Um, if you get really good at it, you could make some uh, fairly decent edits with it. But overall, Paint is pretty much just a, a quick crop tool. It's not really anything you do a lot of heavy designing in. Um, more recent versions of Windows 10 do include the uh, Paint 3D app. Now this does has have some more options than this classic Microsoft Paint. You have different effects. Uh, you have different 3D shapes you can add. So it definitely does more, but, but Paint 3D still comes across as kind of like a an app for you to mess around in and make pictures. Uh, if you want to do any kind of serious photo editing, we recommend Paint.net. So Paint.net is not associated with Microsoft Paint at all. Uh, it's just a free uh, photo editing app that has a lot more uses uh, than Paint 3D. You have uh, layers, you can make different adjustments to the colors, you can use uh, effects to blur out information uh, or add noise or anything like that. Uh, it has a color dropper feature, a lot of different different uh, cool tricks. So it's definitely not Photoshop, it, this won't work for professional photo editing, but for editing screenshots that you take um, or just making some uh, quick touch-ups to images, you have a lot more options with Paint.net than you do with either of the Paint apps that are pre-installed on Windows 10. Uh, moving on to the fourth one is uh, Notepad. Like the other ones we've been talking about, Notepad is an app that's been around forever. It's pretty much just a basic text editor. Um, you, know, you get text, that's it. It's a good place to store scratch notes, but you really don't have many options um, aside from word wrapping and changing the font if you want to. Um, one of the most annoying things with Notepad is that when you use the control backspace shortcut, um, which normally in Windows deletes an entire word instead of deleting letter by letter, um, it just gives you this weird character, um, which is just because Windows doesn't know how to encode what you're typing. So if you are like me and you use that shortcut all the time, you'll probably prefer an alternative uh, Notepad++. 
which is not related to Notepad at all. It's a very, very, very souped up version of Notepad. Um, it blows uh, Notepad out of the water. You can change uh, the encoding options. You have all kinds of options for how you want it to display. You can change the theme. Um, Notepad++ is aimed at programmers, so if you come up into the language tab, you can go into the language you're using and choose you know, C++ or whatever, and then it will spell check, or not spell check, but it'll format correctly when you use brackets and um, keywords and things like that. So it is aimed at programmers, but it's really useful for just people using it as a quick text uh, notepad as well. It has multiple tabs, which lets you keep documents open uh, side by side, and it also will keep your notes. So if you type something and don't save it and you close the program, uh, it'll still keep it open for next time you use it. And it even has a ton of plugins you can add, like a spell checker and everything else. So for programmers or just anyone who uses Notepad for quick notes, you definitely need to check out Notepad++ as an alternative. And finally, uh, we're going to look at the Windows snipping tool and what you can replace that with. So the classic method of taking a screenshot in Windows has always been to press the print screen key and then paste it into paint, um, which is a little clunky. So a couple versions of Windows ago, Microsoft introduced the snipping tool. It's a pretty basic screenshot. Cool, you click new, you click and drag where you want to take a screenshot of, and then you get a little basic editor where you can um, use a highlighter or use a pen to circle items or whatever. Um, it's pretty simple and it does have a link to open in Paint 3D, um, but if, you're, if you take screenshots with any frequency, we definitely recommend ShareX. So ShareX is a really powerful screenshot tool, probably the best you can get for free. Um, Snagit is a really well-known screenshot tool, but that costs uh, about $50 a year, so we don't recommend that unless you need it. But uh, ShareX is really powerful, so it has all kinds of different options for capturing. Uh, you can capture full screen, you can pick a specific window. If you're using multiple monitors, you can just pick one of those. Um, it even has scrolling capture, which is a feature that you don't see in too many other screenshot tools. That allows you to capture a web page or something else that's longer than your screen uh, by scrolling through it for you and then capturing it all at once. But it's not just that. Uh, ShareX, aside from capturing options, uh, it also has upload options, so you can upload uh, to various places. Um, and the really cool thing that it has, aside from the, oh, the editor, that's not what we wanted, um, if we go in here and edit the image, um, it has a lot of different options way more than uh, than the snipping tool. Uh, you have stickers, you have highlighters, you have things like steps that are good for um, for showing someone a screenshot. You can say this is step one, step two, step three. So you have all that. And then the other really neat thing about ShareX is that it has workflows and these after capture tasks. So you can, if you do the same thing every time you take a screenshot, you can set, set ShareX to say, okay, every time I take a screenshot, I want to copy it to my clipboard, and then I want to save it to a file, and then I want to open it in the editor so I can make changes to it. So that saves you from doing really repetitive work every time you take a screenshot. So those are our five uh, programs we recommend that you replace. Not everybody has to. If you're happy with whatever one, it's not a huge deal, but um, if you use them with any kind of frequency, um, you'll get a lot more use out of the alternative than the, the stock one that comes with Windows. So uh, be sure to flip over and read the full article on Make Use Of for more tips. Uh, we've covered a lot of these apps in more detail if you're looking for uh, specific tricks that you can use for them. And as always, please subscribe to Make Use Of's YouTube channel for more videos like this, as well as giveaways and other cool tech-related stuff. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.